Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with 90 Seconds at 9am, sitting in for David Chaston who's on holiday this week. We start today with a swathe of official Chinese data that came out over the weekend and has been taken as evidence that the world's second biggest economy may be bottoming out. First of all, factory production rose a more than expected 9.7% in July, year on year. We also had retail sales in China up 13.2% and fixed asset investment, excluding rural households, up 20% in the first seven months of the year. Consumer prices or inflation in China was up 2.7% in July. And, and Wall Street last week completed its worst week since June amid suggestions the Federal Reserve may begin tapering its massive quantitative easing or money printing program from September. The S&P 500 index ended down 1.1% for the week. The Fed has been buying 85 billion US dollars worth of bonds every month, and this has helped push the S&P 500 up more than 18% so far this year. However, Dallas Fed President Richard Fisher reiterated that the Fed remained open to reducing its purchasing from September if the economic data keeps improving. And now to Japan, where the country's massive quantitative easing program appears to be paying off for Japan's biggest companies. Bloomberg has reported that Japan's biggest listed companies double their earnings in the June quarter from the equivalent quarter of last year. This came as the yen fell 5% against the US dollar in the June quarter, and the yen is now down 20% against the greenback over the past 12 months, which is boosting earnings for Japanese companies from overseas. The Bank of Japan is aiming to expand its balance sheet from 158 trillion yen at the end of 2012 to 290 trillion yen by the end of 2014. This comes with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe striving to end 15 years of deflation in Japan through monetary easing and fiscal stimulus. Well that was 90 seconds at 9am for Monday morning and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.